Welcome to Module 1, Unit 1. This unit is going to focus on qualitative inquiry and the introduction to qualitative research. So we have three learning objectives for Unit 1, Module 1. Uh, the first is really just to distinguish qualitative research from quantitative research. The second is to be able to discern differences in methods and data type by these two different research approaches. And the last is to be able to describe scholarly contribution uh, potential of qualitative research. So what kind of contribution qualitative research can make to our scholarly endeavors? So let's get started. So when you think about qualitative research, what comes to mind? I often ask this question when I'm teaching qualitative research, and the kinds of answers that I get have to do with either methodology, so focus groups and interviews, or data type, so people say things like words or text or narrative. And we don't have a one common definition for qualitative research. There's several ways of describing what is qualitative research, and I've pulled together a couple here. The first is from uh, Norm Denzing, um, who's at UIUC, and he talks about qualitative research having an emphasis on the qualities of entities, the processes and meanings that are not experimentally examined or measured in terms of quantities, so in terms of numbers, amount, intensity, and frequency. Another definition comes from Yulin who says, uh, qualitative research is a unique organizing framework. It provides a theoretical and methodological focus and is really good for complex relationships between personal and social meanings, individuals and their cultural practices, and the material environment or one's context. And the last definition that I particularly like is from Strauss and Corbin, who talks about qualitative research as any kind of research that produces findings that are arrived at not by statistical procedures or other means of quantification. So in these modules, you're going to learn about, a lot about qualitative data analysis. This is a systematic way of identifying findings in the data for which statistical, statistical procedures are not useful. Um, other ways of analysis are relevant. So the role of the qualitative research then is really to give us a better sense of one's of, of contextual factors, of, of the nature of things, the nuances. Qualitative research tends to tell us things about what is happening here. What are cultural norms and values that are important to understand that aren't easily measurable by quantitative approaches? So we tend to think of qualitative research as a kind of research that helps us explore or understand. It provides insight. Um, it can help us discern certain kinds of perspectives, get at the nature of relationships. And it's, it's good for those phenomena that really aren't amenable to quantification. So these typically are the more complicated, nuanced phenomena. Qualitative research can help us explain the gaps in quantitative data analysis. It can uh, contextualize our, our quantitative findings um, is particularly good for oppressed populations who might be lost to traditional data collection methods or may be inadvertently or deliberately left out of kinds of research. So qualitative research really finds its home in health equity research and kinds of research that come with a social justice frame. Uh, qualitative research finds a home in community-based participatory research in which you work with people who are experiencing a phenomenon of interest to better unpack it. So one of the best ways to describe what is qualitative research is to discern how different it is from quantitative research. And so this table here really just distinguishes how the purpose and the focus and what each research paradigm relies on differs. So we tend to think about quantitative research as really good at describing things, giving us the range and the scope and the uh, causal relationships among particular ph phenomena, where qu qualitative research can give us a deeper understanding of the phenomena. We might engage in qualitative research first in order to then engage in quantitative research, but that qualitative research really unpacks some complicated things so that we know how we want to measure them quantitatively. Quantitative research uh, 
relies on accuracy, reliability, really controlling and avoiding bias. Um, so when we think about quantitative research, we think about the the, the um, randomized control trial, the more rigid, the better. Um, and the researcher, it's very important that the researcher stays outside of the data, outside of the research to avoid bias. And qualitative research is really different because, because we're interested in the richness of a phenomena, understanding kind of the, the nuances, the nature. Qualitative research relies actually on flexibility, um, flexibility of the research design, of the data collector, um, and, and it can rely on interpretive, open-ended, and iterative methods, so methods that might change over time. That's a very big distinction from quantitative that relies on standardized approaches where it's all very, very much the same and any difference is a problem. In qualitative, you actually can have iterative methods be very useful, so they change as needed. And one very important thing is that in qualitative research, because the data is not numerical, the researcher is the instrument in the research process. So they are the data collector. Um, and, and the ways in which you collect qualitative data, uh, you use yourself as a human being to produce data from other human beings. And the data is in the form of um, text, uh, words, um, uh, uh, narrative data, and so as the data collector, I often think of the researcher is the the questionnaire or the survey instrument, um, but the researcher in qualitative research can actually be adaptive and adjust in order to best produce the data. So I want to just introduce some qualitative research methods. We have uh, modules and units that explore each of these research methods, but I just wanted to introduce them for this introductory unit. Um, when we think about qualitative research in we, uh, qualitative research methods in public health, um, these are some common ones that we talk about. Um, the first is the interview. This is an individual interview. Um, it's an exchange between one interviewer and one respondent guided by a set of questions. So an interview methodology can actually vary quite a lot to, in the degree to which it is formal and structured or informal and unstructured. Um, you can do an interview that is face-to-face. -face. You can do an interview that's over the phone or um, via Skype or all sorts of other ways. Um, and these continuum of ways are really important to understand because you want your method to match your research question. So a very complicated problem uh, would be very hard to unpack, for example, on the phone, and you would want a face-to-face -face, uh, interview such that the interviewer could really adapt and adjust and kind of work with the interviewee. A focus group is the use of group interaction to produce data and insight. And focus groups, I tend to, I like to think of them as focused group discussions. They're also around a set of questions. They also can vary in the degree to which they are formal or informal. We tend to think of about five to eight participants are ideal for a focus group. You want a group that's big enough for the group to engage in dialogue together, uh, but not too big. Um, and the dialogue in the focus group is the data. So while in an individual interview, you'll have a audio recorded uh, interview that will be transcribed and that will be one person's story. In a focus group, it's actually the discussion that the group has that is the data. Another method that's very important in public health is observation. This can be participant participant observation in which you engage in, in the phenomena that you're observing or passive observation where you're not participating. Or all sorts of methodologies related to observation including ethnography. And this is a way to really observe and learn and try to understand something more inductively rather than deductively. Photo voice is a method that you're going to learn about through a particular uh, unit in these modules. It's a participatory action research method in which people create and discuss photographs as a means of catalyzing personal and community change. So in this phenomena, in this research method, excuse me, the photographs are the data and the discourse around the photographs are the data. And lastly, oral histories are a really important methodology or stories, oral history is uh, on one end of the continuum of, of uh, a method of collecting stories. 
um, and it's a dialogue particularly typically between uh, two people um, in which you explore the significance of time in an individual's life. And again, this can range from formal to informal. But these can be really important ways to gain insight on a public health phenomena that we don't understand quantitatively. So qualitative data, I want to talk about data type here, is anything that's non-numerical. So the kinds of, of data that are produced in qualitative research um, uh, are often words, can also be photographs. Um, and they can come from verbatim transcripts from audio recorded data collection, for, like the example I gave for interviews or focus groups. They can also be written personal narratives or online they could be blogs. Um, that any kind of textual content, a policy, uh, a policy statement can be a data point. Patient narratives can be a data point. Uh, diaries and any kind of health condition can be a data point. So it's anything that's not numerical. It's important to think about when qualitative research is useful. It's important to have a clear understanding of the purpose of the qualitative research and what kinds of data you're going to produce prior to engaging in the research and prior to analysis. So this makes us think about what do we want to know, what would be the research question you're trying to answer, what kind of data would you need to answer that question, and what's the nature of the insight that you need to answer that research question. Some people rush into qualitative research without really thoughtfully thinking this through and can make analysis really difficult and challenging. I wanted to speak a little bit about the origins of qualitative research uh, compared to quantitative research. So those of us in public health, we have a long history of health services research that is quantitative in, in nature. Um, and qualitative research has really emerged largely from the social sciences, anthropology, sociology, social work, and increasingly is adopted in a public health setting. Uh, nursing actually has adopted qualitative research uh, uh, quite uh, extensively, and public health is beginning to really adapt more, a more qualitative lens. Uh, the more uh, the production of health inequities um, is uh, so complicated and our intervention methods to trying to reduce health disparities don't work. So public health is increasingly adopting qualitative, but our history is, is rooted in quantitative. And this leads to kind of a methodological hierarchy where students learn more about quantitative researches than qualitative, and that's one of the reasons these modules are made available to you. So when we think about the kinds of research questions that we're trying to answer, in quantitative research we tend to answer things like how much, how many, how often, what size. We can look for ex um, uh, explanations and associations, so causal uh, uh, findings. Does X relate to Y and Z? Um, does X cause Y? Um, we use quantitative metrics and approaches and evaluation, so what difference did this program make? And in qualitative, uh, we're really more interested in, in um, uh, why is that, what is that, who is that, um, so this more exploratory. We want, we're interested in what is the nature of the phenomena. If variations exist, why, what variations exist, why, um, what do things mean? Uh, why are things happening? What patterns might exist in this phenomena that, again, we might explore more quantitatively down the road? How are things similar or different? How did this happen? So we tend to think broadly about qualitative answering how questions and quantitative answering what questions, but of course it's more complicated than that. Uh, qualitative evaluation can be very useful um, in program evaluation. Um, and it can help us understand kind of what difference does the program make, same ways that quantitative can, but with different kinds of data and with a different lens. So that's the end of Unit 1. The purpose, again, was just to introduce methodological origins, what kind of methods do we use, what kind of data are there, and really distinguishing qualitative from quantitative. So please go to quiz. Uh, module 1, Unit 1, and then move on to the next module. Thank you.